Chapter 3A, the input screen in the setup menu. First thing we're going to do is press setup. And then we're going to be greeted by the input screen. So you're going to see it's number 1 out of 11. If I wanted to page back and forth through the different screens, if I wanted to choose output or any of these other things, I just use the arrows back and forth here. Now if I tap not quite the arrows but a little bit on the outside, you'll actually see that the parameter changes. So that's a little way to change the parameter. And also you can use your finger and scroll through the different parameters as well. So that's just how to navigate the menu in general. So we're going to start with input. I've got dynamic mic selected. If you've got an SM58 or an OM7 or something like that, a dynamic microphone, you're going to want to choose dynamic mic for your input. For me, I've got an E835 FX. It's our partnered Sennheiser mic. And of course, it has mic control on it, so I'm going to want to choose that. So I'm going to move along here. I'm going to say, OK, condenser mic is next. Well, condenser mic is any mic that requires phantom power. So you're going to have to check and see whether or not your mic needs phantom power. Make sure you're using a good grounded uh, XLR cable so that that phantom power can get along the lines there. And then plug it in, select condenser mic, and your mic will turn on. So that, that could be a reason if you're not hearing any audio but you have your mic connected, double check that you don't have a mic that has condenser or a condenser mic that needs phantom power and it just isn't turned on yet. Next over in the list, we're going to see MP75 mic. So we're almost over to this E835. MP75 is, of course, our microphone that we have uh, mic control on. It's a great sounding mic. So if you've got one of those, choose MP75. So next in the list, voila, is the E835 effects mic. So I've landed on the type of mic that I have. I would leave it there. I'm going to, of course, show you the remainder of the, the settings here. The next is USB for the input. Now this would be a case where uh, you've recorded a track, say, into your computer and you want it to send the vocal from your computer through the unit and process it and then send it back to the computer uh, you know, to lay into the track that you've already got going there. Uh, the way that the USB input works is that anything that comes in on the left channel is sent through the vocal path. Anything that comes in on the right channel is sent to the guitar path. So uh, you know, for example, you could send a guitar and a vocal, only process the vocal and use the guitar to guide the harmonies. And what you'd end up doing is going into the mix page and turning the guitar volume all the way down so that it doesn't end up sending any guitar back through the unit. Uh, similarly, if you wanted to process the guitar and the vocal, you would just leave that mix control turned up and you would get back a stereo output that has vocal and guitar mixed. So that might be something that uh, if you wanted to re you know, record a dry vocal and guitar and then maybe mess around with some effects later, you could change things on the fly. So it's kind of a cool way of doing it. Uh, what it doesn't refer to for USB is actually plugging into the USB input on the back of the unit. We don't support microphones that are USB connected with that connector. We do only support uh, microphones that either go in the XLR input or in the headphone jack. Uh, with the inline microphone like I talked about. Next is room sense. So when you change to room sense here, uh, what happens is the, uh, the two little mics that are down below actually pick up what you're saying and that becomes your microphone. So if you didn't have a microphone at all, you could actually listen and use the room sense to drive the vocal effects. Now of course you're, you can't do that really in a live situation because it's not going to output through the TRS outputs. You obviously wouldn't want the signal going out through the PA and then back in through the room sense mics and feedback city would start happening at that point. So this is sort of, you got it on your tabletop, you're in the hotel room or something like that and you just want to do some singing and you don't have a mic at all. Um, and then headphone mic is the last choice. And this is a bit new for us here. If you've got a headset mic with a little inline thing like I talked about in the connection guide for the headphone in there, you can actually select headphone mic and it will allow you to use a set of, uh, say, iPhone earbuds where you've got the earbuds and then the mic in line. It'll pick up from that microphone so you can actually hear yourself and sing with just that one setup. So that's great for if you're just sketching out ideas you know, in your, in your room. I just want to mess around a little bit. You don't want to set up any kind of rig. Just select the headphone mic. And of course, you go through the same process of setting the gain with the LEDs, but you do it at the headphone mic level here. So that's just popped up below. You'll see if I am not on headphone mic, that, uh, that thing changes to room sense. You don't actually see it. Move to headphone mic, you see minus 13 dB there. I would just select it, sing into it until I get the green and yellow LEDs, but I don't actually clip out and get red LEDs. Cool, so let's move on to the next feature because we're out of inputs here. There's nothing left over here, so we'll move down. Now we've got, I'm going to go back to the E835, which is what I was using there. Good. So now we'll notice that room sense changed to ambient. So what does that mean? Well, I've got two choices here. I've got ambient or ambient auto. And those are the only two choices. Ambient means all the room sense is going to do is listen to the room. So in the mix page, you're able to send a little bit of that room sense sound back through your headphones. And that would be, say, if you have in-ear monitors, but you want to hear a little bit of the stage, you know, that's maybe not getting picked up in your microphone. You kind of want just a more full sound of what the band is doing. You would turn up the room sense, and you'd be picking up the ambient mics in that way. 
If you switch it to ambient auto, it means that as a part of the auto chord detection, the natural play algorithm, it's going to use the room sense mics to pick up what key and scale the band is playing or that you're playing with your instrument. If you have a guitar plugged in or MIDI plugged in, that will override the ambient auto. Those are sort of chosen first. But if you don't have a guitar or a MIDI uh, input coming in telling you the key and scale, giving it, giving it chords, um, you're going to be able to use these room sense mics, mics on auto there. So if your harmony is set to auto, it will pick it up from here. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to set the key and scale in the harmony description later on. Let's move now down to guitar. So I'm just going to grab a guitar real quick. I'll be right back. OK, I'm back. So I've got a guitar in here. And uh, I'm just going to show you how to set the level. So I'm not going to you know, play anything fancy, because, well, you know, I'm not the greatest guitar player in the world. I'm, I'm no Tom Lang. Uh, what I'm going to do is just hit a chord. And I'm going to say, OK, I'm looking for this input level to clip. This is the way that I set the, the guitar level. So I just play as hard as I can. OK, it didn't clip there. So I'm going to turn it up a couple of dB. Keep going here. There we go. So I got the clip light to come on. So you'll notice that. See how the input flash there? So now I'm going to start backing it off. And I'm going to go down, say 16 dB. Still doing it. OK, 15 dB, it didn't do it. But of course, you might play a tiny bit harder when you're actually out you know, doing a gig. So let's turn it down just slightly. Cool. So that ends up getting our guitar set the way we want it. And that's something you're going to want to do You know, anytime you change guitars. This input level is independent of the output. So you can you set your input here the same way you're setting your vocal input to make sure you have enough signal to drive all the effects. And then you're going to set the output level in the mix screen so that it blends properly with your voice. Now let's move along to mic control. So we're going to, uh, I'm just going to set up a very quick little preset here with reverb and then on the hit. We're going to have a delay. So I've got a reverb sound, and then I've got a delay with a reverb. So you can hear how that sounds. Now let's go back to this uh, setup menu here. When I say mic control is set to hit, I'm going to use my mic control button. It's right here on the mic. When I press the button, you'll see the hit light come on. And that delay is there. And now it's gone, and now it's back. So if you're running around the stage and you want to just uh, you know, apply a hit effect, you can use that just as it is with the mic control set to hit. But there are some other options here. So let's just scroll through them and we'll see what happens. So now we've got hit plus talk. Works exactly the same way on press. So on press, hit, hits off. Hits on, hits off. So what's the difference? Well, the plus talk means what happens when I press and hold the button. In this case, I press and hold. And now you'll see it's flashing, and I'm in talk mode, which means you're getting just the voice, with tone applied, obviously, but straight through. So if you wanted to talk to the audience, you could press and hold and bypass all of the effects. When I press it again, it goes back to my regular non-hit. Press it again. There's hit. Hold it. And we go into talk mode. So next up, we have hit plus tap tempo. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the hit button on and off right, with my mic switch here. But if I press and hold, it gives me the tap tempo, and I can tap the tempo in along with the song, which is really, really handy. Now, there's one little caveat here. If you've got the unit set to slave mode for the tempo, and that's over in the metronome section, it's not going to allow you to do the tap tempo, because what it, you're saying to the unit is, don't pay attention to any other tempos but what I'm receiving via you know, USB and MIDI and that kind of stuff, uh, because you're obviously syncing to an external track, and you don't want that tempo to be broken. So if you do have that set to slave, and you're doing the tap tempo and it's not working, that's why. All right, so next up, we've got hit momentary. And that essentially means the only time that the hit function is working is when you're pressing the button. So as I press it down here, you can see press off, press off, press off. It's not click on, click off. It's off, on, off, on, like that, which is really great for things like harmony or even transducer or delay if you wanted to do a single note of delay. So you could say, I'm singing along and I just want to go delay. Right on that particular word. Really great use of that uh, feature there. So favorite, I'm going to go to the home screen here just so we can see what's happening. With favorite, when you press the button, it cycles to the next favorite. Here we go, next, next, next. If I press and hold the button, it says scroll reverse. And that means I can actually go backwards. So you're going four, three, two, one, 
Press and hold again, it says scroll forward. One, two, three, four. So that gives you a good way of navigating your favorites wherever you are. If you want to go backwards one or by forward, forwards one, works really well. Let's go up to loop. So this turns into a one button looper. Now I'm just gonna turn off a lot of these effects here so that when I do a loop, it doesn't sound all crazy. So this is just a one button looper. If I wanna record, all that is is just pressing the button one time to start the record. If I wanna overdub, I'm overdubbing a loop. I'm overdubbing a loop. I'm overdubbing <laughs> That's not annoying or anything. If I wanna stop, I just double tap and it stops. Now if I want to erase, I press and hold and it deletes. Now you notice that, that was there was that little uh, brief burst of noise and that's because you're having to press and hold and of course the press gets registered before the hold and then you get that little bit of noise. Uh, so it might be the kind of thing where uh, you know, you're gonna wanna use the, the erase on the box if you can, but if you're out there and, and you're running around and that, that's a really great solution to just being able to have a one button looper. Next up is just loop start and stop. So if I've got a loop recorded, now, I don't have one, so I'm just gonna record this. And you're gonna hear, now I don't have one, I'm just gonna record this. So now, now I don't have one, so I'm just gonna record this. And you're gonna hear, now I don't <laughs> What it does is it goes record, and then from then on in, it's just play and stop. So we press the now, button, I don't plays. Have one, so I'm just gonna record this. Press it again, and it stops. Very basic functionality. That's a really good way to use it if you've done a really complex loop at the box itself, and then you've grabbed the mic to go run around on stage, and you just wanna start it and stop it at the right time. Use that control, really handy. Okay, now we've got harmony plus harmony hold. So how does that work? Well, let's do a little bit of harmony here. So I'm gonna go into the, uh, the effects here. I'm just gonna make sure I've got a reverb and a, and a harmony on. Now I've got a harmony. So when I press the button, the harmony comes on. Now the press and hold function is for harmony hold. So when you hold it, that harmony is gonna stay. So what I mean by that is harmony. So it takes a little bit of getting used to and to figure out where you're gonna put that, but if I sing harmony and then I sing another word over that harmony, it holds that note. And of course you're gonna to have to get creative where you use it and how it all functions, but that's the intent is that you can activate a harmony and then you can hold that note if you want to and that harmony will persist in the background. If it's multiple voices, the multiple voices persist as well. It's really cool when you get a, a good chance to kind of play around with it and get used to it. And that brings us to the end, because I can no, go no further, of mic control. So next up is our tone style. And of course, tone style is where we have our uh, adaptive EQ, compression, gating, de-essing. Normal is sort of our, our go-to. It gives you a little bit of brightness in the high end, takes out some of the mud, um, you know, generally just shapes your voice really well. The other styles that are available, basically you're gonna wanna choose based on the sound of your voice. So I'm gonna go through them here, but I'm not gonna give examples of each. It's just sort of, a, you know, you're gonna have to use your own uh, guidance and you're gonna have to try your mic and sing. But we've got things like less bright if we want a little bit less, you know, on the voice. You've got uh, a little bit more warmth. So if you've got a thin voice, you can add some warmth. Or if your mic is thin, you can add a little bit more warmth. Uh, you've got more compression. You've got normal with no gate on it. Now our gate, that's something that we've had some questions on. Um, it's not a very aggressive gate. It's about minus three dB roll off at I think minus 18 dB or something like that. So you know where the threshold is. All it's meant to do is to just reduce open mic feedback. It's not meant to be a gate that goes, ha, ah, cut off when I get you know to a certain frequency and just jam it right off. It's just a very slight reduction in volume when you get to a certain threshold. And that just helps for the, like I said, the open mic feedback. So then you have, of course, all the other, um, you know, more compression, less compression, all that with no gate. Um, so that's, uh, that's where you'd start. If you don't want to use any tone style whatsoever, you could always just turn it off. I'm going to turn it back on because I like it. So last but not least on the input page here, we have our pitch correction amount. And people ask about this quite often. What this is, is a, a chromatic pitch correction. So it's autochromatic, it tunes you to the next nearest note, which means that it's not key and scale based. So it won't necessarily connect you to the next nearest correct note for the song. It will just chromatically get you to the next note. So let me show what I mean. I'll turn it up to 100%, just so it's a little more obvious. And I'll sing to sort of a scale. Now you can hear how it steps like that. So you can hear how it's jumping you to the next note. If you want just a bit of correction on your voice all the time, I would suggest setting this to somewhere around 40 to 50%. If you say 40% and I go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can hear some of the correction some of the time, but really it's quite subtle and your audience won't perceive it most of the time. And that's a really good way to have just a little bit of kind of tweak in the background to make sure that you're really on the note. 
Another little interesting tidbit here, a little tip, is that when you're listening to pitch correction through, like, say, a wedge monitor or even through your in-ear monitors, if you hear bone conduction from your mouth, as well as what's coming back from the pitch correction, it will sound phased. You'll hear oh, it's sort of chorusing. And that's because the pitch corrected amount, uh, or the pitch corrected voice, is phasing with your regular uncorrected voice. Now, the less of that phasing you hear, the closer to the note you are. So it's really actually a good little tool you can use to improve yourself as a singer. So that comes to the end of chapter 3A, the input menu, and we'll move along.